how barometric pressure actually affects fish, fantasy football is just like walleye fishing, and CPR derby loopholes. We got that and more coming up right now in Target Walleye's Top 5 presented by Seafoam. Let's dive on in. Ask most folks, even diehard fish heads, how barometric pressure affects fishing, and most of them have similar answers. Next question. Low versus high, rising versus falling, millibars, mercury, and newtons, oh my. Enough! Do you want my head to explode? I came across a great virtual angling post chatting with Brian Bro Brosdahl about some specifics on how barometric pressure actually affects fish and walleye fishing. Thank you fellas for putting that together. And while Bro admits he's no meteorologist, he has put in enough time on the water while actually paying attention to what the barometer is doing and how that day of fishing has went. Though if he was a meteorologist, I would definitely tune in each night. Bro says that air pressure affects fish by dictating how they use their air bladders. When the pressure is low, they shrink their air bladder and sink to bottom, waiting for more comfortable levels. When the pressure is high, the air bladder expands and they rise higher in the water column, away from the higher pressures that are near bottom. Old adage agrees that fish often become lockjaw during high pressure systems, setting the stage for those frustrating outings where you mark lots of fish but they just refuse to eat anything. So anything on the barometer below 2990 is on the low end, anything above 3012 is considered on the high end. When pressure is high, you gotta switch to more finesse presentations, lighter line, smaller lures. What you're looking for is pressure stability. Think about it, if pressure constantly fluctuates, the fish have to adjust their air bladder. Often, I mean, making them uncomfortable. Would you want to eat if you had a bellyache? <laughs> I mean, typically no, but I'm also one of those bigger blobs on the sonar that will eat through the pain. But <laughs> anywho, stable pressures from 2990 to 3005 are key to watch for. So use weather apps with accurate bar barometric readings to get a good sense of when the fish are feeding and dial in exactly when fishing is going to be top notch. I love little nuggets like that that actually mention specific numbers and I can apply it to my own day on the water. So again, thank you fellas for putting that together, but also when in doubt, just go fishing. Number two, have you ever seen a bimini top like this one before? Rain or shine, that dude is just gonna send it across the lake. That wild encounter was posted by Boat Buddies on Facebook. I ran to the comment section. It turns out a lot of folks said that they have apparently done this before when moving a boat lift to a different location. I'm sure if it works, that it would work out slick but I don't know if I'd trust ratchet straps that much. Also, this might explain why I have found multiple sunken boat lifts out over deep water and caught fish on them with my Humminbird Mega Side Imaging. Anytime I see that, waypoint, waypoint. You might not know this, but I'm actually obsessed with fantasy football right up there with fishing and it's that time of year. I got a few more drafts lined up in about the next week and I legit get that kind of giddy feeling that I only get on maybe fishing opener. It's tough to explain, but if you know, you know. And if you think about it, fishing and fantasy football have so many things in common. The random boat draws for tourney takeoffs are like random draft orders. They're out of your control and they will definitely impact your game plan that whole rest of the day. Sleeper picks are a lot like secret fishing spots. You think they're all yours and then as soon as you see someone else snag that right in front of you, it's just gut-wrenching. Usually you come into the day or match up with lofty expectations and leave embarrassed by your team's abilities. Once in a while the stars align, everything clicks, but usually you're just holding on for dear life. When you're hot, you're hot. Confidently making moves and decision making comes easy. But look out when the wheels fall off, then you're obviously gonna start daydreaming about the good old days when everything fell into place. You might be good friends with your opponent, but you want to 
You need to crush them. Oh, now get head. ready, because I am coming for you. Prepare yourself. You'll always have that arch enemy in your fantasy league or your fishing league, and you know that their name just popped up in your head when you heard that. The more time you spend doing research, learning, really diving in, the better you do. But then all of a sudden your line breaks or an injury pops up and you realize it's all over. And when it comes time for weigh-in, you realize half the folks have already left. I just want to say good luck to everybody still drafting those fantasy teams over these next few days. And stay strong in those ruthless group chats. Catch photo release walleye derbies are all the rage right now. It's where folks take a picture of their fish on a bump board, measuring the length, release that fish, and then use a conversion chart to convert that length into a weight. Everybody has the same chart, so it's usually fair <laughs> sometimes. But imagine catching a unique critter like this one that David Keller shared on Facebook while fishing a length-based walleye tournament. I wonder how many spots that would bump you up in the standings. Especially if it wasn't the only one to make the card. Usually those conversion charts are pretty inflated, saying that walleyes weigh significantly more than they actually would if you brought them into the scales. Unless you were to catch a fish like this fat 22 and a half incher that Jason Shakurit caught the day before the Green Bay NWT. 22 and a half inches and weighed 6 pounds 12 ounces. That baby's thick. <laughs> Number 5. Quick, what's the first thing you think of when you see this picture? If you said, what is ice fishing? You've come to the right page. And apparently Jesse Johnson is already pacing the shorelines. And it won't be long now, because that spot looks like it's already ready for truck travel. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> That wraps up this week's top five. A big shout out to Seafoam for keeping us running smooth and making this fun video series possible. If you want more walleye and ice fishing related content like this, sign up for our free Target Walleye emails at targetwalleye.com and I'll see you back at seven.